escape from Experiment Island an experience like no other. Eight strangers have been washed up onto the beach. Only four will leave. And there's only one way to win on Experiment Island, and that is escape. Experiment Island. It's crazy, extreme, physically and mentally tough. Now add eight strangers in two teams. They'll do anything to escape from Experiment Island. Anything at all. Once team colors are called, the fate of our castaways is sealed and the race to leave this stormy Scottish outcrop begins. Jessica, blue, go! Randy, Maria, red, go! Dennis, blue! Scott, red! Kirk, red! Travis, blue team, go! And Jason, blue team, go! Experiment Island is located due north of the back of beyond and believe me, soon you'll see why escape is the only option from this wild and unforgiving place. But before our teams go anywhere, they're going to have to build and race an unlikely and exotic vehicle to escape in. This week our two teams of modern day buccaneers have to build an electric cable car. Do these guys have what it takes? They better hope so. So the die is cast and from now on our intrepid travelers are either red or blue. Over the next five days their practical skills, scientific knowledge and mechanical know-how are going to be tested to the limit. So let's find out what these guys are made of. On the blue team. It's really important that everybody be the herd. So I mean, you can obviously get along. I mean. <laughs> Dennis is an assistant DA in California who is a self-proclaimed do-it-yourselfer. I mean, you think you're probably our leader. Um, really, mainly I do technical direction, which is taking the pretty set designs and engineer them and, and chop them up and figure out how it's going to be built. A theatrical stagehand and rigor, Jason brings with him carpentry and metalworking skills. I uh, build robots, basically, for at uh, the AI lab at MIT. Jessica is a PhD student at MIT, where she loves to work with her hands building artificially intelligent robots. You're a good voice cat, you know a little bit about oh, yeah. navigation and whatnot. Yeah, navigation, compasses, things like that, mappage. Travis is a stay-at-home dad. In his free time, you'll find him writing computer programs for NASA's mission control. So, that's the news from the Blues. From now on, the teams move forward together and it's straight to work. Their first job is to guess what vehicle they need to design, build, and race from the clues Vanessa has put in their crates. Okay, so what kind of goodies have you put in the crates this time? Okay, well in my crates I've put a ski hat and some ski goggles. Uh, means winter. Mm -hmm. I've also given them a battery and a small motor. Uh, means electricity. Mm -hmm. And finally, some car keys and some steel cable. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. It's it's got to be the. You're um, so right. It's an electric cable car. Cable car. I was just about to say that. I think we've given them enough time. Okay, teams, open up your crates. The rules are simple. Only one team is allowed to guess at a time, and the winning team gets a one-minute head start to the next challenge. Go, go, go. Yes, yes, yes. Go. Okay, that's a call alarm. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, I have to give it. I have to give it to Red. I have to give it to Red. Uh, Four-wheel drive vehicle. No. Go back. Dennis, give it to me, big boy. Uh, just keep it. No. No, go, go away. back. <laughs> Like a stealer, and it's got um, a cable. Um, cable car. Right. Cable car. 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 Cable Excellent job, excellent job. You guys are building an electric cable car. Guys, guys, I'm going to have to give you a one minute penalty. I'm going to hold you here for a minute because the blues got it first. Which gives us time to meet Team Red. Yes, I'm a blacksmith. Blacksmith? Yeah, Randy. Randy's nickname is Metal Man. He's a metal sculptor and a welding demon. Jack of all trades, master of none. Firefighter Kirk loves the great outdoors and tinkering with old cars and new bikes. 
Wires? That's me. Wire electricity? Wood or wires? C. Scott is a computer whiz who has a master's degree in electrical engineering. Okay, and you're? Communicator extraordinaire. <laughs> Self-styled Renaissance woman Maria owns a marketing firm and is a born leader. And a master of many things. I think you got money again. Here's a map. Follow to your next challenge. Do not forget your crates. Okay, Good luck. Stuff. Great, great, great. great. Stay this stay exercise is all about team building. Oh, and navigating. Each team has a compass, map and directions to three locations. At the third location, they'll find instructions for their next challenge. The first instruction is to follow a southerly course to a circular stone beacon. We can bring the 148 for 100 pieces to the old glass stone beacon on the hill. Yeah. Navigational directions are usually sequential, but for some reason, Travis okay, so has jumped straight to instruction two. And so it wants us to go. It must be the jet lag. For 100 pieces, who's a good pacer? Okay, think. You've got these. One of these. Car. 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 And you've got some cable. Cable, Put cable the car. Together. car. So blue team follows their misguided guide. Here are your instructions, your directions to the okay. next challenge. Get out of here, guys. Right, go. Get your crates, go. I'll read the question. Heading suddenly directed to the circular yeah, stone yeah. beacon. Oh, that's the hill. That's uh, the big, I see Yeah, I think it's that top thing. Let's go. But Jason doesn't look too convinced. The Reds seem determined to make up for lost time, as they head in the wrong direction as well. Now that looks like right. teamwork. Now we go 100. The instructions say south, and the blues head east, and the reds go west. Completely by chance, the reds reach the second navigation point, but it's the blue team's clue. Hey guys, did you read this? It says head south up gully for five rope lengths. Okay. Are they thinking oh, sabotage? Let's have the gully. We've discovered the blue team stuff. Look, it's on our way, so we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. And we need to go 100 paces towards that. Toward that. Uh, hold on, rewind. I just want to check something. Pretty good boy scout, you know a little bit oh, about yeah, navigation and whatnot. Yeah, navigation, compasses, things like that, mappage. Okay then. By hook or by crook, the Reds have found their way to the third location and the next challenge. Despite the horizontal rain, they press on to retrieve an important key. This key unlocks a forge where Vanessa's hidden all sorts of useful tools. The first team to get the key gets first dibs. Okay. You must remove the key from the copper pipe without the key touching the structure at any stage. Do we have anything that insulates? I told you we were going to use that tape to get the key. Here, I'll let you, you do it. Okay. The pipe has an electric charge running through it. There's a key makes contact. It will complete an electrical circuit and the sound of a horn will be heard. By putting insulating tape around the key ring, Randy shouldn't complete the circuit. Where are they? Hey, when you retrieve the key, if it is clear of the structure, you must signal by sounding your air horn. The challenge using only provided to the You're the first to get the key. You are first in the forge. Congratulations. Excellent job. The Excellent job. Right? Awesome. That's awesome. A full 25 minutes later, the Blues finally find the key challenge and a very wet Vanessa. Guys, what took you so long? That's going to be dissolved. We took tour of the island. They had a bite to eat. Yeah, and I seen it. Well, while you were doing all of that, the Reds completed their key challenge. This, of course, is the very key to the forge that you are after. That is what you probably would have got on recent form. Don't think you'd have done it. But meantime, the reds are off and you're last. Down but not out. The blues shrug off defeat and the miserable weather to join the reds in the courtyard for the next challenge. Okay, you're marooned on an island and all you know is you have to build an electric cable car to get off it. Now it's time to get down to business. We've given you everything you need to make your cable cars. Everything that is except the design. Few simple rules. You have to use the motor we provided to power your cable car. It's got to be able to carry one person in relay across a ravine. So it's got to be able to go backwards as well as forwards. Now is the time where you take a close look at the raw materials we provided for you. Well, we can tell what they're intending with that plastic bin. Is yeah, that's that battery holder. Batteries. That looks like... The generation, storage, and use of electricity is at the heart of their challenges, and it's electromotive force that will power their cable cars. Three conductors, three conductors it's like uh, Romax kind of stuff. We don't see a switch. We're going to have to figure out that problem there. Right. You said double pull? Double pull, double throw. That's a little bit of current. 24 volts. Yeah. 
here. Red team won the key challenge, so they're first up in the forge. Let's see what goodies Vanessa has stored in there. All right, this is the forge, and we now know they have to build an electric cable car. What's in here that's going to give them the edge? Right, I've stashed some really nice bits of kit in here, including this bike. Now, they already have bikes in their equipment, but this is a racing bike. It's nice and light and could give them some really useful spares. And these are luxury wire strippers. Oh, they are luxury. Actually, it would probably be a lot more comfortable for them. Mm. Bicycle chains. Now, again, they've got bicycle chains, but they might need more. You never know where they're going to want to stick their electric motors. That's true. Switches. Which uh, will save them some time because they don't have to make them themselves. Yeah, that'll come in really useful. And finally, this. What is it? This is an electric air pump. Yes, it is. What would we use it for? Well, probably nothing at all. It's actually a red herring. This is virtually useless when building an electric cable car. Randy, you're the chosen guy. You're going in for red team. Your team's future lies in your hands, okay? No pressure. Listen out for that air horn, because that's a 10-second warning, okay? Don't get caught in there, because if you do, the only thing you're leaving with is a red face. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, your time starts when you turn that key. Go. Okay, he's got one minute to grab three items and get out. They're talking to you, Randy. He's missing, man. Randy, what do you see? Over. Okay, I've got a pulley, I've got a chainsaw, and I got some extra chain in the bucket. Uh, I see a hook. I'm switching. Uh, no, 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 no. I like everything I. I like everything I got over. He might like everything he's got, but he's missing the special items I've planted in there. Uh, we don't need that. I like everything we've got. Um. Uh, I like everything I've got. Does he like everything he's got? <laughs> There's another bike. Any thoughts? Over? No bike. Over. He might regret right, leaving that good. bike. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with what I've got in my hands. Well, he's got the chains and that's about it for this trip. But let's see if the Reds can do something creative with these other things. Ta-da! All right, all right. Let's do this real quick, pass those along. What, uh, okay. what do we got here? Okay, I got a, I got us a pulley. Okay. It goes over the, the cable, obviously. Okay. Secondary power source, and you never know what we need the chain for, neither. We may have to reverse. Okay, are you happy with what you got? Yeah, I'm happy with what okay. I got. That's all that matters. Time to lock up and switch it up. Okay, don't worry, the forge is nice and small. Much easier to navigate than the island, all right? You know the rules, right? Yeah, I believe I do. Okay, go. One minute, three items. We know the Reds have left plenty of good stuff in there. Again, we got some chain. Um, let's see what else we got. We got that full bicycle with a chain, brakes, and uh, derailleur looks intact. That's Randy's gift to you, Jason. Looks like uh, the starting clutch to a lawnmower. Okay, how about something for a pillow block bearing or something like that? I'm um, not seeing much. Those wire strippers could come in handy. We need a bike for sure. All right, we got the bike. Keep talking, what else? I uh, got a small motor with some more gears, no springs. Keep lifting them off. Skateboard for bearings. Well, they went in second, but with the bike alone, they should be better off than the Reds. You're gonna hurt me. You're gonna hurt me. All right, Jace, pass these along. Tell me what you got. Oh, what do we got? We got a uh, bicycle. Yes. Any spare parts, I guess. Um, anything usable on that, and uh, extra gear, maybe some, uh, maybe some bearings, I guess. Usable. Wheels and trucks. Wheels and trucks. Usable for something. Wheels and trucks. All right. I hope that's good because the forge is closed for business. It's the end of day one and the teams wind their weary way back to camp where they dry out and discuss an action-packed 24 hours. Yeah. What do you think of that boat ride, man? I kept falling off the main boat. Yeah. I hate it when you get your underwear wet. It's just it's a bad feeling. I, all I was noticing was that my boots just were I, I could squeeze my boots. Squish, yeah. squish. Yeah, none of it has Absolutely been mediocre. Extreme. The weather hasn't been medio mediocre. We're working on the go constantly. Everything has been wide open. I totally enjoy uh, Razzing Team Red. And I, I really enjoy the reactions. My oh, biggest yeah. complaint about camp thus far is these stupid little bugs called midges. That oh, we have now. my God. You are not 
kitty. I think I still have one in my eye. Rain or midges? Rain or midges? Honestly, rain. So this is Experiment Island, and our teams have made it through day one. They now retire to their luxury accommodations for a jacuzzi and a massage. Yeah, right. Tomorrow is when the real challenge begins, when they have to build their very own electric racing cable car. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome back to Escape from Experiment Island, the Alcatraz of TV techno competitions. Our contestants have spent a restful night under a flimsy tent halfway up a windswept mountain, so they should be raring to go. And why are they here? To build and race an electric cable car. Of course. Board it. Midgies. Midgies are like mosquitoes with an attitude problem, and they add yet another degree of difficulty to life on Experiment Island. All right, the midgies are no fun now. Oh, yeah. The bugs are chilly right now. They may get up and go into work an attractive option. So, Vanessa, it's time for our teams to take the first steps towards freedom. Yes, it's time for their first escape conference. What do we got? Which we gives got them time to come up with a plan and to get their cable car designs uh, down on paper. A couple tires. But there is one all-important rule they should remember. From now on, if either team gets things so bad that it won't work, or they don't win their challenge, they get an escape penalty. And that is bad. Oh, yeah. That's a five-second delay at the start of the final race. Why you take the tires off, use the rims for the, uh, yeah, the exactly. rim for the cable. Today's challenge is to build their cable car, install the motor, and make sure okay. it works. We can either do direct drive, like if we, if we can get away with it. Yeah. It's a three-piece crank, we can take it out. And we can do direct drive, put the motor shaft right to the crank, and it'll turn it, and that'll spin the chain. If we can put the whole second bike underneath here. That's another option. Oh, and instead of the seat, the thing is the system by itself needs to have a CG that's lower than the cable just in its non-loaded state because the bike will flip off the thing when we send it back. Yeah. Tell me what this creation is going to look like. Well, we've got the bicycle hanging upside down and we've got the cable running underneath the wheel. Uh, we're moving the wheel for the traction so it runs on the rim only and we're going to remove the front tire and put the seat either on the forks or the uh, handlebars. How are you going to make it go forward and backward? Remember you've got to reverse this thing. We're just going to reverse the player using the motor, run the motor backwards. Um, you have to fiddle with the gears on the back of the bicycle a little bit in order to, uh, to get it. Normally bicycles free wheel bicycle but backwards, but um, shouldn't be a problem. Threads are hanging their bicycle from the rear wheel. Tack welding the rear cog will eliminate the bicycle's free wheel, enabling it to be driven backwards and forwards by simply reversing the motor's polarity. And by mounting the motor directly to the crank, they'll have direct drive. Talk about this, uh, this part right up here. What's going on? What do we got? We got, uh, we got our cycle on the, on the line. A um, couple pieces of steel coming down. We we'll look like we're going to take our extra bike there and uh, attach it again and just kind of translate that down here so when you sit, you sit on the on the, on the other bike. Oh, okay. Blues are really taking advantage of their booty from the forge and Jason's experience in stage design. By hanging the second bike from the first bike, they'll have two wheels on the wire giving them excellent stability. Are you worried about the extra weight that you're adding just by adding a whole extra bike on there? Or yeah, uh, that, that, that kind, of, kind of comes as a concern, but the, the motor we have is from a wheelchair, which has which got a lot of juice to it. It's got a lot of weight in itself. Yeah. Also, stability is a really big issue. I mean, we have a lot of different weights. I'm in maximum weight condition, so I, I design it for me. <laughs> is, uh, if you design it for me, it'll work for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Everything looks great, guys. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks a lot. It runs uh, right. very much about human pedaling power. So, from the same basic supplies and a little help from the forge, the teams have come up with two very different systems. Today's job is to construct and power their electric cable cars. In order to successfully complete this challenge, they need to power their cable car one yard forward and one yard back. Okay. So we put on the first piece, so we cut out a whole silhouette, right? Right. And then, then you do the clamping thing like you did, and then we just put the... The blues are mounting their motor on the bike frame, where an additional cog will drive the bike pedals. We'll have to use the shaft as a jig. The Reds are outside testing the traction and stability of their single wheel design. I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident. And it's rolling great. That's yeah, a really good roll. Little small circles. Jason is checking the wheel alignment, while Jessica is locking the steering mechanism. I can't really see. Yeah, let's pop that side as well. 
The Reds are not using the bike's derailleur, so Kirk is shortening the chain, which should be easy for this avid mountain biker. While Jessica and Dennis work on mounting the batteries, the Reds debate whether to use the bike's gears. Okay, so what is the fastest way to finish this right now? The Cut best the chain, way to finish the seat it on. right now is to take like three lengths out of the chain, uh -huh. put the seat on, and put our seat on it. And we're done. Yeah, okay. How long is it going to take for us to do it so that we can shift gears? No one's tried to figure out how to do it. Okay, that seems like a long time. I can work on that while you put that seat on. Scott wants the option of using the gears for speed, but the other team members want to finish first and avoid that escape penalty. When you make that choice, you're basically deciding whether we win or lose that race. It's three to one, we need to finish it now. That's what we're going with. Democracy in action. Don't touch that with a file. Meanwhile, the Blues still haven't mounted their motor to the bike. The furs that are going to screw you up even more. Can I stop? Just yes, yes, it's going to be snug. And Jason is making sure Travis doesn't rush delicate work. Grab the chain. No, 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 we're free. No. Clear. The Reds have attached their motor to the crank and are going forwards. And by changing the motor's polarity, backwards. Excellent, you guys. Excellent. Excellent. So, are they pedaling to victory or can the Blues catch up? Find out when we return to Escape from Experiment Island. Okay, the Welcome back to Escape from Experiment Island, where our teams are close to finishing their first challenge, to build an electric-powered cable car. Team Red has been ahead all day and is almost ready to test their vehicle while the pressure is mounting on the blue team. We have hammers and opponents. It's so weird because no like hammers near different. the shafts. No hammers near the shafts. that are uneven. Jason does this kind of thing for a living and knows what can happen if people get sloppy. Watch your head again. Yeah. Randy is the smallest member of the team, and even he's struggling to get into that seat. I'm very cool with that. Roll it. Wire it. Are the Reds compromising their design in the rush to win? Man. All right. Hey guys, it looks like they're pretty close. They're testing it, so let's get going here. We're close. They're doing the test. Yeah, yeah, they're they're to roll their horn when they it's they it's a very homely machine. No, just keep yes. working. This is not. Keep your eyes on the prize. What do you got? That's much better. Excellent. Reds are close to the wire, but that seat design still looks cumbersome. Come race day, four people are going to have to get in and out of that seat. In order to win this challenge, they must power their cable car one yard forward, one yard back. Whether or not it's a winner, we'll find out in that final race. Okay, and with the Blues picking up a five-second escape penalty, you certainly haven't done your chances any harm at all. And as winners, you get choice of materials in the next challenge, which is? Well, for your next challenge, you have to build a fruit battery with enough electricity to power this multimeter. All right, it's vital you get this thing working because you are going to need it in your final challenge. Okay, and to play with, we're giving you some citrus fruits, a galvanized bucket, and a piece of copper piping, and your choice as winners to power it, lemons or limes. All right, Red Team, good work. Get some sleep tonight and think long and hard about your challenge. Is it going to be lemons or limes? <laughs> as Reds celebrate, the blue team burns the midnight oil. It's not a penalty here. It's just a break in momentum. That's true. I mean, we're not going to need five seconds. The teams are working towards a showdown on the final day. Red's victory has just given the Blues an escape penalty, which is a five-second delay at the start of the final race. We've got talented people. If all, both teams have talented people. It isn't, that isn't the important thing. It's how we work together. Yeah. That is important. Travis is very smart, and Travis, in my opinion, is more of a by-the-book guy, so I think he's going to build the most proficient, best machine to do what we need to do, as opposed to, like we looked at that and said, we can build the most proficient and best one that we can, or we can build the one that we can build the quickest that'll so get the job done. With their vehicles still not completed, the weary blues return to camp and take a few moments to lift their spirits. The blue team design against the red team design is very typical of, of, of what we have for components of our team. I needed our design to be uh, technologically uh, and, and far as uh, more sophisticated. Ours is the flying Walindas on their bicycles, and there's the clown car. <laughs> it's all a big circus. Yep.
Team Blue is up bright and early to finish their cable car. I'm not a morning person. While Team Red contemplates making a battery out of citrus fruit, galvanized buckets, and a copper pipe. The obvious way to do that is to like squeeze the lemons into the thing. One one terminal goes to the the, box, the outside of the bucket. The other goes to the metal the, the copper pipe inside. Uh -huh. right. Refreshed and ready for action, the Blues add the finishing touches to their double decker cable car. I'm sorry. You think technically one lemon's enough? I think I think one lemon's enough. One. Lemon will be about a volt. And lemons, I think, are more acidic, personally. I'm not I sure about that, but I know that I can't stand putting lemons in my mouth, but, but lime, I love. Lime, yeah. With a lower center of gravity and two wheels on the cable, the Blues vehicle appears more stable than the red car. And the seat design? Well, it's as easy as getting on a bike. We're going, we're going. We're good, we're good to go. We got the yard. Yeah. Nice work. Nice work. Once we're out of here. Teams? Uh, you can hear the rain is pounding outside in typical experiment island fashion, so we decided to give you a little respite as we introduce the next challenge. Red Team, you were the first to finish yesterday, so you get the choice. Is it going to be lemons or limes? Lemons. lemons. Interesting. Did you know that they're both as effective as each other, that they're both as acidic as each other? Yeah, but I think the lemons are bigger and juicier. Good thinking. All right, Team Blue. You got everything to play for today. You do have one escape penalty already, five seconds, but it is early in the week, and you both know at the end of this challenge, we are giving another escape penalty. You guys ready? Yes. All right, go. If you put two dissimilar metals in acid, they'll make electricity. The bucket's made from zinc, the pipe from copper, and the acid, well, that's the fruit juice. The teams are creating electricity to power a multimeter that they'll use to check their cable car batteries. Okay, we need um, 1.5 volts for this little guy. For that battery. And we're going to have to have um, different uh, galvanic constants for the metals. So we got to have everything metal we can. First line. They simply need to clip the multimeter to the two metals in the acid. Yeah. Got one. Good grief, it almost finished and then it just started. Okay, copper cable. So the teams are loose and full of juice, but the real test is whether fruit power can jolt their volts and bring their multimeters to life. Find out when we return. Welcome back to Experiment Island, where our two teams are sinking their teeth into a pithy little challenge, the lemon and lime battery. I don't really remember that lecture on fruit-powered batteries from high school. Can you fill me in? All I need to make my battery are two different types of metal. These coins will do perfectly. I've got a quarter and a penny. So, put your hand out. Okay, I'll put the quarter down first. Now, I need to bathe these two different types of metal in acid. So, will you squeeze my lemon? Uh, ah, yeah. Okay, and we're going to kind of sandwich the, the lemon juice between the two. Okay. Give it a bit of a rub. Make sure we get a good connection. Okay. Excellent. Now, to prove that we've got a battery, I'm going to attach this black wire to the quarter. And can you attach the red wire to the penny? I can. Let's see what we get. Have we got a battery? Yeah. Ah, we do. And that proves there's some electricity between us. Yeah, let, her, let her do that one on there. The truth is, there's enough volts in one lemon or lime to power their multimeters. The first team to figure this out and push the two metals into the fruit will win the challenge. The the clip that baby on there. Okay, let's see if we can do anything. It's working! You got it? You got yes! It. Yes! Oh! <laughs> 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 Congratulations! You have just escaped an escape penalty. Get ready for the next challenge. <laughs> So the teams go into the next challenge all square with one escape penalty each. Blue team and Red, you're probably wondering why we had you power up those multimeters. Vanessa. Okay, well the bad news is I have brought along these extra batteries so you could double the power into your electric cable cars. But I forgot to charge them up. Unfortunately, this being Experiment Island, you can't just plug them in. So your next challenge is to charge them using one of these rather unlikely selection of materials. And of course, you'll be needing your fruit-powered multimeters to check that they're properly charged. 
So, continuing the theme of electricity, the teams, believe it or not, are going to build hydroelectric power stations. Using what? Well, soup ladles and a bicycle wheel for one, and an old wooden wire spool for the other. Since the Blues won the last challenge, they get to pick between the two different methods. One requiring low water pressure and high water volume, the other high pressure and low volume. Low pressure, low RPM, I like the higher pressure, RPM. High pressure. I agree, it's more we all agree? Okay, we all agree. All right. We have decided. And your decision is? We have decided to go with high pressure, low volume. Red team, you get this kid right here. All right, it's time for you guys to go and generate some ideas. Sleep well, and I'll see you tomorrow. They chose metal, and I believe they chose metal just because they know that you're a quick weld well there. We've left the high-tech stuff to the low-tech guys. Well, not low-tech guys, but guys who don't primarily think like that. Right. So that was a really good yeah, strategy I think, uh, decision, I think. This is not the type of competition where we don't like Team Blue. We, we like them, we really respect their intelligence, we think they're great people. It's just that this is a competition and we really want to we want to win. I think that maybe they chose this location, so we really would want to escape. <laughs> I've got this theory that if you wear sunglasses, it'll be sunny. Okay, one way or another, we've made it to day four, and the action is starting to heat up. They have their multimeters, they have their cable cars, but have they got maximum power to make them move? Well, actually, no, which is why today they have to build a water wheel, charge the batteries up to 12 volts using hydroelectric power, check the charge using the fruit-powered multimeter, then attach the charge batteries to the cable car, doubling their power. Whew, I'm tired, and I just had to say it. We have one wheel, this other wheel, bicycle wheel. Side by side. Jason, exactly. make an axle for us, right, Jace? Yeah. That one is going to be basically the big pulley. Right, our, that's our V-belt. The large one. So our alternator, right? Exactly. Okay. We have the option of taking that wire spool, just draw that little circle thing, the wire okay. spool there. And, and then just, I mean, the easiest way to do it would be pretend that you're looking, from, looking through the side on it. Put a circle for the middle, right? Well, that's uh -huh. where the axle will run through, and then you could obviously just see paddles off of there. It looks like it's an exercise of converting potential into kinetic, into rotational, and then into electrical energy. Tell me about your cunning plan, or plans by the looks of things. <laughs> well, at this point we have two different ideas. We're planning on either using the wire spool they gave us out there, which is about six feet in diameter, and we'll use it right off of the waterfall. Or we're going to start from scratch and use the two by tens out there to make our own paddles and do something similar to this, like a four paddle or maybe six paddle version of the same thing. So do the Reds use the large wooden wheel, which will turn the alternator at a high RPM, or do they build a smaller lightweight wheel, which will be easier to construct? The issue will be decided by whether the small wheel can drive the alternator at over a thousand revolutions per minute. Hi guys, talk to me, okay, how many we got? 13 spoons that are going on around here. Tell me why you picked this kit. Randy, we knew, was very good with metal, and we wanted to negate that advantage. So, ah, little strategy. A little subterfuge. We right. always like that here. That's right. Excellent, excellent. Travis, you were mentioning something about the oh. gear ratio, or what was the ratio? Well, the spoons, if they're farther out, the RPM of this wheel is a little slower than if they're closer in. I think we're aiming for high RPM, which means uh, they're closer into the wheel, and the uh, alternator will spin a little bit faster. Blues are building what's known as a Pelton wheel. The soup ladles are attached to the bicycle wheel and used as paddles. A concentrated jet of water directed at the ladles creates a high RPM because the system efficiently harnesses all of the water's energy. This is a challenge in two parts. Since they have to build two different systems, the actual construction of the water wheels is not a race. The race will begin when they start to charge their cable car batteries. It matter that when you have the box, you're, you have a frame, you can do anything you want with the box. You can put the well, listen, on the box you haven't finished, you have a frame. Well, listen, you haven't let me finish my idea. I gave you 15 minutes of time. Give me five minutes to go for it. Go. Just, just prove your idea is going to work. All right, so we're ready to put the wheel together, guys. After doing the math, Red's decision has been made for them. In order to get a high enough RPM, they need a greater wheel circumference. Are you making two of them, or is this, is you're going to have one on one side? Mm -hmm. So uh, We'll mount right onto the axle of the wheel. 
and um, it'll be sandwiched and um, between another one so it stays on and then these we'll, put, we'll still put all of them on. Oh you are putting them all. That's what I was wondering. We're using all 13 right? And we can bend them a little and to adjust it so it'll be no problem. Do you feel pretty confident about this? Uh, yeah yeah. We just want to make sure that we finish in time. Yeah, so that's a bit my cue to get the heck out of here and let you get back to work. Oh, pretty much. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> hey, Scott, I thought the Red Team's mantra was keep it simple. This isn't simple. The more voltage we can put on the batteries, the faster they'll charge. But if you put too much, they explode. So I've run uh, some of the, uh, Randy's welding wire across here, and we get about 10 ohms of resistance from one end of the wire to the other. And by adjusting the alligator clip, we can uh, dial in the exact voltage we want. And, and you won't explode your battery. Exactly. Excellent. An ingenious design, but completely unnecessary, since the alternator we gave them will do the job much better than welding wire ever could. And then we're going to come right Stage here. Stage one of this two-part challenge is reaching completion. Looks like they're making a skateboard ramp out there. Fortunately, we have a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> Back this way, front this way. The two pulleys have to be aligned perfectly or the belt could fly off at high speed. I'm ready to go. We're going! Woo! Woo! Actually, yeah, we're done. We're good, good to go. All right. That's lock and roll. That's our test kit. <laughs> Now that the mechanisms have been built, it's time to find a suitable water source to power them. Reds need to find a site where there's sufficient volume of flow to turn their wheel. Not lacking in the water department at all. And the blues must find a source where there's enough drop to drive the Pelton wheel. By putting the hose at the top of a 50-foot waterfall, the pressure created is 23 pounds per square inch. And by narrowing the nozzle, they increase the water speed, which in turn increases the wheel speed. What Team Blue thought was a skateboard ramp is actually red sluice, which funnels the water onto the wheel's midpoint, creating less drag and allowing it to spin more freely. Are you guys ready? We're ready. ready. Yeah. All right. Vanessa, come in. Over. Copy that. Over. Red and Blue Team. Go! The battery started 8 volts, and the challenge is to charge them up to 12 volts for full power in the final race. They'll check the charge using the fruit-powered multimeters they made in their previous challenge. It's 8.4 volts! We're slowly rising. The Blues are hot favorites to win the wet t-shirt competition. The power of the stream is driving the wheel, which in turn drives the alternator. The alternator works on the principle of electrical induction. The electricity it creates is passed down the wire to the battery where it's stored for later use. Here we go, Scott! We're pretty fast. It's 9.6 volts now. 9.5 volts. 11.37. There we are. Yeah. 11.2! It really is neck and neck, so which team is going to take charge? I think we're there! You want, should we blow the air horn? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Justin! Yeah. 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 I can't believe it, we were just about to pass the 12 volt barrier. We were so close! Alright, well All right. done Red Team, well Woo. done! Alright, the Blues <laughs> have to carry on and... Think about that escape penalty that you just dealt them. Plan well. Tomorrow is that big relay race in the ravine. Two, escape from Experiment Island. Yeah. Yeah. The Blues need to finish charging the batteries and get another soaking in the process. They also receive their second escape penalty. I got a chance to go off by myself and, and do my electric thing for a while, and that just, you know, I, I was in my zone. It charged you, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, no, and I, I, I really, it was really trying. You didn't get that. I'm used to thinking people are going to screw up, right? And yeah. like, I have to have my hand in everything, and I have to watch over it, and you just can't get it done unless, right, unless you do it yourself. But it's starting to feel like I can, you know, relinquish some of that. It was really amazing to me to see something that we built with our own hands that could actually be an alternative um, power source. It was really, for me, it was really powerful. As our two teams bed down for the night, each team will be dreaming that it will be their last night on the island. But their escape does not rest on dreams. It rests on beating the other team in a head-to-head -head relay race to rendezvous with the rescue craft. I'm afraid tomorrow, one team's dream is going to turn into a nightmare.
This is what we all live for on Experiment Island. It's race day. The teams better hope that they're prepared because there's only one chance of escape, and this is it. Yeah, we can do that. They built their electric cable cars yeah, and they the charged batteries. up their batteries using hydroelectric power. Now it's time to race these bad boys. The cables have been strung across a ravine. Each team member must cross the ravine, return the cable car, and go immediately to their team's muster point. Once on the cable car, team members cannot help the driver. The race ends when the last team member dismounts on the far side of the ravine. Okay teams, this is it. Not only is this your chance to make a little bit of history as Experiment Island's first televised electric cable car relay race, this is also your only chance of escape. A rescue copter will shortly be passing the island, but it only has space for one team. Escape penalties. Red team, you have one. Blue team, you have two. That gives you, Reds, a five-second advantage. You go on the first air horn. Blue team, you go on the second air horn five seconds later. You guys ready? Yeah. Ready. All, right. All right. Good luck. Get out of here. Woo! Here we go. Woo! Well, Vanessa, it is no exaggeration to say that this competition is balanced on a tightrope. Who are you going with? I have, I think, the Reds. For sure. The Reds, they've got stability issues that are worrying me. They but are unstable. They are unstable. But I think they're lighter and they're faster, and I think that could clinch it. I'm going with the Blues. I really find that the Red Team's seating design is a little bit too cumbersome. They're going to lose crucial, crucial seconds getting in and out of the chair. I think the Blues have got it. Teams, are you ready? And the Reds are on their way. Five seconds later, and here come the Blues. Just like the circus, eh, Travis? Randy maintains Red's lead. The empty car travels at 30 miles per hour. Oh, but the Reds have derailed. The stability questions about their car may have come home to roost. But the Blues' stable design is staying put, and they've made up the five-second penalty. Maria's now just behind as the Reds get back online. This is gonna go to the wire. The Blues keep their lead. Oh, no, Jessica has not reversed the motor's polarity. Reds sneak in front. Good catch, Kurt! Reds are losing valuable seconds every time someone gets in and out of that seat. Go, go, go! The Blues design is so much more stable that you can get on and sit down even as it's moving. Legs reverse! Legs reverse! But with only Kurt to go, it has to be Red's race now. Oh no, another derailment. It's off the rail, it's off the rail. You got time. It's gotta be the Blues now. Could the stability and weight of Blue's car now be their undoing? With the lighter design, Kirk is back on track. Jason just can't get it to budge. So Kirk brings it home for the Reds. It was a little frightened. I got a little frightened too. That's why I had my feet on the rail and we had talked about landing. Legs and then return. You had a good strategy well thought out though, didn't you? Uh, really it, it, good Kirk strategy. Kirk hadn't been last, man. Yeah. We would be sunk. And when Dennis got off, it started bouncing yeah. Yeah. and swaying. And then when you grabbed it, it just derailed. Oh, Teamwork got you through. It was real close. Teamwork did get it. Teamwork and, and a little bit of luck. Engineering. A little, little bit of luck. Just and that yeah, little yeah, a little tiny bit of luck at the end. Yeah. 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 Good job, Dennis. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, well done. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. I'm blown away. Uh, now we get the escape. Yeah, we get the escape. I never lose. Once again, both teams have shown great ingenuity in the face of extreme and adverse conditions. Both went where eagles dare, but only one managed to fly the coop. Join us again for another amazing escape from Experiment Island. This has been a presentation of TLC and the BBC, world-class television. Coming up, lift massive loads with enormous cranes and find out how they work. Monster Machines Power Lifters is next. 
then see the best of Junkyard Wars tonight on TLC. And for more online, go to discovery.com and click on TLC. With modern technology, TLC connects the dots and decodes the mysterious signs where truth hangs on a single piece of evidence. Cracking the case where the untold truth is revealed. Weeknights at 7, only on TLC. Thank <laughs> you.